Okay, we've got a complex circuit problem in which we're asked to find the current through and the potential difference across each resistor in the figure. Okay, well let's label each resistor. We'll call this one resistor 1, we'll call this one resistor 2, we'll call this one resistor 3, and we'll call this one resistor 4. We have to find the current through and the potential difference across each one. We're going to start by analyzing the circuit as a whole. We can take this whole complex circuit and we can reduce it to a single circuit that consists of a single power supply and a single resistance. So it's a 10 volt power supply and a resistance that's just the effective resistance of the whole circuit. Well how do we get the effective resistance of the whole circuit? What it looks like is this. We're going to break it down in parts. First off, We've got a single resistor here, and then we have three resistors that are connected in parallel with each other. Okay, now let's look at the resistance of these three resistors considered together. For just this part of the circuit, the resistance is 1 over 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. That's how we compute the resistance of parallel combinations. And if we work that out, it's 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5, 1 over the whole thing, and we end up with 1.67 ohms. Now this whole resistance is in series with resistor R1. Well, resistor R1 is 5 ohms. And so the resistance of the circuit as a whole is this resistance, 5 ohms, plus the resistance of the parallel combination, 5.6 or 1.67 ohms. And so we end up with an effective resistance for the whole circuit of 6.67 ohms. That's the effective resistance for the whole circuit. If we know that, we can compute the current in the circuit. And the current in the circuit as a whole is just equal to delta V divided by the effective resistance. Delta V is equal to 10 volts. The effective resistance is 6.67 ohms, and so we end up with a current in the circuit as a whole of 1.5 amps. Now let's take a look at the circuit. All that current comes out of this power supply, and it all goes through this resistor. And so now we're ready to start our solution in earnest. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to make a table. We'll make a table of resistors and potential difference across them and current through them. That's what we're looking for. So first off, let's look at resistor 1. Well, resistor 1 right here, we know how much current it has through it. It's got 1.5 amps through it because we know that 1.5 amps comes out of the battery. So we're on our way to a solution. 1.5 amps goes through resistor 1. Now take a look at this. I've got 1.5 amps through a 5 ohm resistor, and so we can calculate a potential difference. For resistor 1, we can say this, the potential difference across it is just equal to the current times the resistance. Well, the current is 1.5 amps. The resistance is 5 ohms, and so we can calculate the potential difference, and that's 7.5 volts. Now we can start labeling potentials in our circuit. It's our convention to call the lower left corner of the circuit zero volts. The potential increases by 10 volts inside the battery, and so I end up with 10 volts right here. There's a 7.5 volt potential difference across this resistor. We just computed that. So the potential at this point in the circuit is 2.5 volts. Let's, let's record that 7.5 volt potential difference in a table. Okay, so here's 7.5 volt potential difference. We're done, we're done with resistor 1 and 1. Now we're now ready right, for resistor 2, two, two resistor three, 3, and resistor, and resistor four, 4. And to think about the potential difference and the current for each one of them. Check this out. That's the 7.5 volt potential difference across this resistor tells us there's 2.5 volts at this point in the circuit. This branch of the circuit and this branch of the circuit are both wires, and we're going to assume our wires are ideal. So the potential at the bottom of each one of these resistors is just 0 volts. The potential at the top of each one is just 2.5 volts. So for each of these resistors, 1, 2, 3, and 4, the potential difference across them is 2.5 volts. 
And if we know the potential difference across each one of them, we can compute the current through them. Because for resistor 2 and 3 and 4, the current through them is just equal to the potential difference across them divided by the resistance. That's 2.5 volts divided by 5.0 ohms. And so we end up with a current of 0 0.50 amps. And we can fill that in our table. I get 0 0.50 amps for each one of these resistors. And so we have our final solution. We have a table of values for resistor 1 and resistor 2 and 3 and 4. That's everything we were asked to find. But now let's go back and do an assessment. And in these complex circuit problems, it's frequently the case that we have a very natural assessment that we can use to check our work. Take a look at this junction in the circuit. There's 1.5 amps that comes into it, and look how much comes out of it. There's 0.5 amps that goes through this resistor, there's 0.5 amps that goes through this resistor, and there's 0.5 amps that goes through this resistor. And so what that tells us is this. 1.5 amps comes into this juncture, 0.5 plus 0.5 plus 0.5 goes out of it, and so 1.5 amps goes out of this junction in the circuit. 1.5 amps in, 1.5 amps out. That tells us that our solution matches with Kirchhoff's current law, and so in fact, the way we've calculated things matches with the way we know the world works.